<clears throat> See, we use all the way three now. <laughs> See, I'm, that just popped in my head. I was like, oh, under the sea, under the sea. <laughs> There you see her sitting there across the way. She don't got a lot to say, but there's something about her. And you don't know why, but you're dying to try. You want to kiss the girl. Sha la 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 my oh my. Wow, wow, wow. Tita, how do you spell accommodate? A C C O Modet Accommodate Tanga. What's up, makers? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nate Avier. And I'm Alan Simpson. We want to talk you, to you about it's bittersweet because it's one of our favorite rooms, but they're closed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We were we were so sad when we got the news that he is no longer in existence. But we still want to review it because I think it's worth it. I think uh, because it was one of our favorite rooms that it's worth talking about and the concept and the fact that somebody in the local Orange County, California area actually bought the concept to remake and do it on their own, but we haven't played it yet. But we're very excited to. But we still want to review one of our favorite rooms for you, and it was the park. Sounds boring, but once you once you've done it, oh boy, it is one of the one of the best rooms we ever played. Uh, it was uh, down, so we played it at the Enigma Emporium down in San Diego, and that day was very strange because our one of our buddies he was playing with us, and he's not very experienced in escape rooms, but we are. Uh, the first room we played with with them was literally in our bottom three ever and we'll probably talk about that in a future video but maybe not on this channel this was one of our favorites overall after we had that disappointing experience we decided to give him another shot and we tried out the parlor and oh boy what this was not your average room whatsoever it, oh, it was, it was a true non-linear room. So you walk in, uh, you walk into Enigma Emporium, and then uh, the your first GM just lets you in, no no explanation whatsoever. Then you, you you walk into the room, you sit down at the bar, and there is your live actor slash GM of of the day, and. Need I, need I tell you this, the GM was not nice whatsoever. He basically gave you what to do and then was silent after that. What are we supposed to do with that? But the plot is that you are a bunch of souls who wander into this old timey parlor. Um, it's kind of like the cross between like a tchotchke shop and a bar. You sit down at the bar and essentially, this is a currency-based escape room, you have to buy your souls back. You have to buy your way out. No, not with American dollars, not with the Filipino peso. No, not with Australian yeah. monies and whatever you call your money in Australia. Yes, I'm looking at you, the 0.7% of our viewers that are from Australia. I have no idea what your money is called. Is it just the Australian dollar? <laughs> You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to buy your way out with their soul money. Otherwise, your soul gets trapped for an eternity. And the GM, who is both the live actor and the facilitator, ours was kind of an ass, got going and showed you your the concept. He kind of started off everything. Where we sat down at the bar, we had to solve the first puzzle and try to figure out. And he made it more and more obvious what he was doing until he pointed out the solution and we got it. For the record though, out of pure guessing, I was only one card away. We're not gonna tell you what the game was just in case the other people use the same exact starter, which we're hoping they're not, but just in case, uh -uh. no spoilers. But out of all those cards, I got down to the last one just on pure guessing. And then he still had to point it out later on to us. Yeah, and once we did 
get that first uh, riddle done, he paid us in, in this case, chips. Yeah. Like poker chips. Uh, and so, soul monies. Soul monies, yes. And then, what is it? He gave us a, a menu. Yes, a menu. A bar, like a drink menu with all the riddles that we can buy and how much they cost. So essentially what would happen is you're betting your life on it. So let's say, you know, an ABC block puzzle uh, cost three monies, but the return on it would be 10 monies. So you'd pay the three, and if you solved it, you get 10. And then you just keep buying your way progressively through this escape room. So you still have an hour, but you can pick and choose the type of puzzle. The harder it is, the more you you get in return. The easier it is, although it's faster, you get less back. So it's more, unfortunately, it taught us uh, economics <laughs> through way of puzzles. And they were hard. It, so, they, they, yeah, they were not easy whatsoever, but they were very, they were challenging. And that's, that's what we're here for. We're here for the challenge. Uh, for this room, we would recommend a group of at least three. We did it with three and we... <laughs> Literally the last second, got out. Oh my goodness. 59, 59 was our time. We won, we ran out the door, and we all collapsed, just laughing and crying and oh screaming hallelujah, because we got through it. But yeah. we'll, we'll, we can talk about a little bit later on how we actually finally got out. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, good, good segue to that, because obviously the most expensive thing on that menu was the room key to get out yep and obviously how we're going to do that by solving each puzzle that we can get you know and uh, like nate said the harder the puzzle the more we get paid we would recommend probably a group of three to five i don't think that room can handle they can say they said it was more up to eight but i don't think that room could have handled more than five people at a time other than the gm i think five players should be about cap for that Right, exactly. Yeah, and so while while we buy our riddles and solve and solve, the GM is just staring us down, just judging us how we how we solve these riddles and puzzles. And <laughs> <laughs> he was in character for sure. Yeah, it, at one point, the, one of the best things is he was sitting back while we were struggling with the puzzle, and of course, you can buy a hint for one money. So you just toss him a poker chip and. He would give you a hint to how to solve your puzzle. But at one point, we're focused. We are getting into it. We're focused. All of a sudden, we hear crunching. Look over. Out of nowhere, he has like a tray of nachos, and he's just staring at us. Um, and just staring us down while eating nachos. We don't know where he got it from. Found out later. He was just hungry and decided to eat in the middle of it. <laughs> Yeah, I think this, I think it was either me or Chris. I was like, "Is this part? Is this part of the the puzzle?" And he's literally like, "No, I'm just hungry." <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun with him, and after when he broke character at the end, he was like, "Normally we get a lot of stupid groups out there, but you guys were funny and stupid." Thanks. <laughs> yeah, great. No, there was one part where we actually made him break character in the middle of the room. We'll get to that. Okay, fine. All the, other than the currency based, which is not all rooms there's like maybe a good handful out there in the world that are currency based but this is probably one of the best ones not biased there were there were a few puzzles that we bought that um that had that, that took all three of our brains just locked in there weren't any easy per se puzzles because we you know we were we're at the mindset where it's like go big or go home so we bought the hardest puzzles of course and with that, of course, we're gonna get stumped. So we we just we're just bouncing each other, uh, bouncing off each other's thinking abilities, which, which sometimes got us nowhere, and it some... still doesn't get us anywhere when we <laughs> hang out. That's, just... That's true. That is true. But of course, overthinking had had a play with it too. Like we were all overthinking at one point, and that the answer was just right there. I agree, and I think one of my favorite things in the room, or just in general about the whole design, was it was was one of those rare like 1.5 rooms where it's still very 1.0 heavy and we've talked about 1.0 type rooms in our escape room 101 um, video if you want to click up there in that little link in the corner um, 
you can check out that video and we talk a little bit about 1.0 versus 2.0 and beyond. Um, but this is like one of those weird in-between ones where it was very 1.0 based and it's very basic lock and key for the most part. But because you unlocked a certain thing, they still have that technology aspect that kind of shine light or added sound to the room or did something like that to make it a little extra special. So I'd say it's a one, like one of those 1.5 rooms that are in between. It was spectacular. Uh, the immersion, I loved the set design because it felt funny, looked funny, uh, felt different, made you really immersed in where you were in the story. And it's a single room. You were trapped in a single room. Like a speakeasy. Yeah, and you had to do everything right there, but it didn't feel like, oh, uh, we're only in a room. No, it was like you I, were... Everything was in that one single room. It was so cool. <laughs> it was dope. It was dope. Which, I mean, were there were there locks and keys yeah. in that room? Sure. I don't remember, because I thought, uh, oh, wait, we had to pay the GM to yeah. get the key. <laughs> to get the key to some of these locks. Yep. Oh boy. But that was like the payment to get into the next puzzle or whatever we yeah, decided to right. do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of our favorite, or one of, yeah, I'm gonna say ours, talking for us is by the time we reached panic mode, we had, I think it was actually like, we needed 99 points or 99 monies to get out, to buy the key, get out. We had 69 monies total by the time we got to the oh crap moment. <laughs> and so we saw that there was an entire, it's like an appetizer section of random little tasks that you can do to uh, gain a bunch of extra money to buy your way out. And we're pretty sure most people don't do that. But the three amigos here, we decided to go for it. <laughs> so at one point, we all had to tend to be asleep for 30 seconds. We had to take a nap. We had to take a nap for 30 seconds. So we all just went, Union take break. a nap for 30 seconds, go. And we all. The thing is, we could have just, we could have just, you know, put our heads down on the bar. No, we just went straight to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, we popped back up. Uh, another one was reading this really long, like terms of use kind of like text. And because I'm the talker of our group, I just went for it. I started talking. And there was like, it started going off on like legal terms and then it started going off tangent and was talking about like, yeah, now you're reading this for absolutely no reason. And I'm just trying to speed through this. And then it said like parts four times and I hear Chris and Alan going hee every time I said it and then <laughs> saying different things, got through it, earned us more money. And I could just see our GM trying to act not interested, but he's like, oh my gosh, these guys are actually doing everything on the like extra, yeah, list. the appetizer list. It's like, <laughs> One of them was to make the GM laugh, which we accidentally did uh, because based on like a really funny commercial, spoof commercial, it was from, <laughs> for the Tita, which is just like your Alexa unit. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor, <laughs> but you should look it up because it's funny, especially if you're Pinoy. <laughs> so we go, hey Chris, how do you spell accommodate? A-C-C-O-C-O-D-E. And that's when the GM broke. That guy was laughing. Got extra monies for that <laughs> so we we're not proud of it <laughs> this was early on in our escape room career we're not oh, proud wow. of it but we got our way out at 5959 that was one hell of a rush or last say two minutes of the room oh we packed so much stuff into like those last few minutes but we got it we got enough for the key we got out 5959 Holy oh, cow. Oh, man. Yeah, and you ever just have one of those, we did it, but you don't feel like celebrating, you just want to cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those moments, but we instead of crying, we were just laughing. <laughs> like, not just because we had so much fun, but playing it. Like, it was torture, but a great torture. It was awesome. It was fun torture. Just like, like my old college days. I think the only thing I had in mind for improvement was make maybe like on the way, like make it an on the way to the 2.0 rooms where there isn't so much basic lock and key, move one part of the drawer or cabinet closet and then, oh, it opens, you know? Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, it'd be, it's 
gonna be interesting when we go play it. When we go play the new version of it that was picked up over here, it's gonna be interesting to see if they took the concept into 2.0 and if they decided to, uh, how much technology they put into it and how modern they made it. Because you can still do the currency based thing, but it was so kind of like, it matched the theme to have it kind of old timey 1.0 ish but you're right i think that's where they could improve is having that extra bit of technology with it or like i think the other thing is to, if you had the room a bit bigger to kind of move some things out a little bit and give a little more breathing space between each of the puzzles you could start to unlock i think that's another component that i would just nitpick at and be like okay if we had a bigger room this would feel a little bit better or flow better or make sense why you're unlocking different things. Right. But other than that, I don't really have much. No, like, not much room for improvement. Like the, the room, over room, overall room was phenomenal. The, G, uh, the GM's acting ability was spot on, even though he was... An ass. Yeah, that. Yeah, it turns out the GM is actually a pretty nice guy. He was just so immersed in his character that we be we believed he was an ass yeah. at all times. And he was cracking up. He said we were probably the funniest group. And I'm like, okay, that's nice. We hold that title. We hold the title. At it's least. very, it's kind of a bummer that they actually shut down though. Why? Why did they shut down? It's the, the, the Panini. They just couldn't sustain through the Panini. Dang it. All right, Alan, tell me, on a scale of one to five duct tapes, uh, how fun was this? Five. Hands down, five duct tapes. Because I just I just couldn't get enough of, like, if anything, like, if it wasn't an hour, I want to keep playing. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It was that good of a room. I agree. Yeah, I'd give it five duct tapes. It, it was definitely one of those rooms where I would tell anybody that's going down to the San Diego area, hey, you need to go play this room. Screw their other room, stupid Lazarus Crystal, that I didn't name drop. But man, the parlor, that was top notch. So much fun. Everybody go play it. Yes. So I would give it five duct tapes as well. All right, and on the difficulty scale, one to five Taco Bells, how many? I don't want to say five because it wasn't the hardest of the hard. And we were also kind of just getting our legs under us for the whole escape room world anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I'll say four, four Taco Bells, because even though we did have to buy our puzzles, there were some that you know, really needed some brain power. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I would, I would probably give it three and a half, three and a half Taco Bells, just okay. for pure, like what the crap is going on. I don't know where I'm at. Uh, I feel like I've done enough, but at the same time, I haven't done enough. Um, yeah, and like I said, we, we didn't get much explanation in the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> so. so just kind of getting thrown into that world. Uh, so which gives us an average of 3.75 Taco Bells in the difficulty section. I'm, I'm still sad that it's not there anymore because it is a replayable room. And we would have gone back down there in a heartbeat to do it all over again. And we were planning on doing it once the Panini was over. And then we went to San Diego. Well, I met him down in San Diego. And we looked it up and it was gone. Just gone. Dead. Like my hopes and dreams. But it was spectacular. Uh, definitely can't wait to see what's going to be coming up next or what the newest room is going to look like or what, <laughs> how we're going to interact with it. Oh, I can't wait. And we're going to definitely do a review on that and probably compare the two because we love the parlor, but we love this new one. Oh, yes. It's going to be really exciting and hope we get to do it soon. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you like more of our content, click here. We made a playlist especially for you. And smack this bottom link if you want to see what YouTube thinks you should watch next. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, keep, keep making, making that magic. magic.